In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. In today's gospel, Jesus admonishes us that the journey to salvation passes through a narrow gate. As we prepare to celebrate this liturgy, let us ask God to have mercy on us for the times we have not been faithful on this journey. Lord Jesus, you are the strength on our journey to salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call all people into the kingdom of God. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them I will send fugitives to the nations, to Tarshish, Put, and Lud, Mosak, Tubal, and Javan, to the distant coastlands that have never heard of my fame or seen my glory. And they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord, on horses and in chariots, in carts, upon mules and dromedaries, to Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord just as the Israelites bring their offering to the house of the Lord in clean vessels. Some of these I will take as priests and Levites, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet 
later, it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So, strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be disjointed, but healed. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. And he will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company and you taught in our streets. And he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and the west and from the north and the south and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do any of you remember the comedian Jack Benny? Oh, yeah. Okay. Jack Benny was always famous for saying when people asked him how old he was, he was 39. Always 39. Never hit that 40 mark. That's what my mom always used to say as well. She was always 39. And 39 years ago, on this day, August 21st, 1977, my mom died at the age of 48. I was 16 at the time, and I wondered when she died, because it was all very sudden, I wondered what she was going through, if she was going to be admitted into heaven. Will she enter the narrow gate? Will the door be opened for her by the master? Will he say that he knows her? And you know, at her wake, I learned the answer. Back in those days, we had the Polish wakes, which were two days, one evening from, the, from six to nine, and then the next day from noon until, six and, or noon until five, and then six until nine. And during all of that time, there was a constant stream of people coming in. People were amazed. This little Polish lady, I was amazed, this little Polish lady, lady here in, on the east side of Joliet, Illinois, and all these people coming to see her. I realized then how many lives she touched. I realized that she let the love of God live through her. And I realized that she actually touched God in so many hearts and in so many simple ways. She knew the gospel command to love others. And she did it in so many different ways. One of her famous ways was making birthday cakes. Everybody wanted my mom to make a birthday cake. 
And if you want the secret to her recipe, she took Duncan Hines and she put an extra egg in the recipe. That's all she did. Turned out like wedding cake. Everybody loved it. She did the birthday cakes. Christmas and Easter, her and my father made a thousand pounds of kielbasa. They sold it just at, for cost, not to make money, just to cover their costs. They were always people who came to our house. It was like we never got to go visit anybody else because everybody came to our house. And when I saw all this, I saw how my mom really touched people's lives because she made them feel welcome. There was always joy. She let the love of the Lord live through her life. She knew God and God knew her. And that's, that's something that really spoke to me very profoundly. Unfortunately, I learned that at her wake and her funeral. But before that, I was, a, I was a teenager and a young kid. And as a teenager and a young kid, you're concerned more about yourself than you are about anybody else. And I see the great gift that my mom was to me and how she passed on the faith in just very simple ways by how she lived her life, how she loved others, and how she did simple things for others. Testimony to all those people standing in line to pay tribute to this Polish woman. Because she let the Lord live through her, she knew God. And in today's gospel, when Jesus says that there were people who say to the Lord, open the door for us. And he'll say, I don't know who you are. But well, we were with you. We ate and drank in your company. and You taught in our streets. And he says, get away from me, you evildoers. Why did he say that? Because these are people, sometimes people who think that all I have to do is just show up. And then when I leave the church, then I just go along my, my merry way. And those are the people that the Lord won't know. Because there's a disconnect from what happens when we encounter Christ's love in the Eucharist and then don't take him out there. But for those who enjoy God's love in the Eucharist and then have it change their hearts when they leave this place, those are the ones that the Lord recognizes. Those are the ones who have passed through the narrow gates of the, of the church, taking the love of God into the world. Those are the ones that God recognizes. We're here. We come and we pray to the Lord. We ask the Lord to continue to inspire our hearts to let him live through us so that when we go home, he can say to us, welcome home and open up the door as we pass through the narrow gates. Together we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And let us ask God for the strength to walk faithfully with Jesus on the journey of salvation that all members of the church grow in the strength needed to follow Jesus faithfully through death to new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders may have the strength to open the doors of justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in need may find strength in the promise that Jesus will open the door of life to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us strengthen each other by seeking encounters with Jesus that transform how we live. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you offer salvation to all who come to you. Hear these our prayers 
that we have strength to enter through the narrow gate into your everlasting glory. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. <clears throat> it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image, and set us over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made for and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her loving husband, with, her, with the blessed apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Yeah. 
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May our loving God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Summoned by the God who made us rich in our diversity, gathered in the name of Jesus, richer still.